Oh, look at this. This is the creative process of love. The ripping off process in action right here, live in front of the camera. <laughs> Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about books. And I can't believe it's come around already, but it's time to talk about my June TBR this week. And um, yeah, kind of take stock of my reading. Because, um, and not even counting book club reads, so my shelter box subscription and the Red Under the Bed book club, which is hosted by Scott and Nell over at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. I'm having to pull back from both of those um, at the moment just until I get back on top of my reading. So not even counting books for book clubs. I'm about 12 books behind where I wanted to be in my TBR for 2021. I pretty much literally have no hope of catching up with that unless I'm like bed bound for a month with access to nothing but books and considering that I'm fairly healthy and I don't want bed sores or a debilitating illness um, that's not likely to happen so <laughs> I'm just gonna try my best but it does mean that I'm making a realistic TBR for June. I normally have about 10 sometimes more books on any given TBR. I'm stripping that way back this month and I've also, um, and I will link it in the description box below, this week, um, today in fact, I watched um, a really great video by Nell over at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot where she set herself the challenge of reading a thousand pages in a week and I was watching that and I was thinking, do you know, I do really well with like readathons, although pretty much the only one I do is Dewey's, but having something to push me really does make me priori prioritise my reading more. So I was thinking I might do something similar. I might just completely rip off Nell's idea, but because I'm struggling so much, I'll probably set it to something like um, 100 pages a day. Yeah. Oh, look at this. This is the creative process of, well, the ripping off process in action right here live in front of the camera. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to do that actually. I think I'm going to set myself a challenge of reading 100 pages a day and see if that helps me reignite my reading love. So if you would like to see a vlog of that, let me know in the comments below because that could be, that could be something fun. It could also be very boring if I fail and um, I don't have an awful lot to film, but let's let's give it a go. But anyway, as is becoming predictable, I didn't read everything that was on my May TBR. I've got four books that I'm carrying forward into June, so I'm not going to go too deep into them. If you want to hear more about them, you can check back to my previous TBR. I'll link that in the description box below. And one thing that I, I don't really, um, I don't think I've ever actually raised attention to it, but I timestamp um, pretty much all of my videos. So if you don't want to hear me <laughs> talking about other books, um, if you go back to that video in the description, you can actually click on the time that I'm talking about a specific book. And I guess likewise in this video, because I am going to talk about them briefly, if you don't want to hear me talk about books that you've already heard me talk about, you can skip ahead to the, the fresh meat for June. So the four books that I'm carrying forward are, briefly, Beauty of Impossible Things by Rachel Donoghue. This is about a, I think it's a girl and her mother and they live alone and the girl has some sort of secret power, I don't know what, um, which she keeps hidden from people but she's kind of forced to reveal it when um, a teenager in her town goes missing and using this power ends up with some sort of tragic results. I'm probably doing that a complete disservice because I had to glance back in my notes to even remember what that book was about. So you might be better off going and seeing my old video. Then I have Fat and Queer, an anthology of queer and trans bodies and lives. Um, this is, well, it, it tells you what it is. It's an anthology of queer and trans bodies and lives and um, yeah I started this ages ago because I had an, I had a thought that I would read it alongside my other current reads and um, just maybe read like one essay or I, I think they 
are all essays, but I might be wrong. There might be some short stories in there. I had this idea that I was going to, you know, like read one every few days or something. Didn't happen. I read the introduction and maybe like the first story and then I haven't touched it since. So I really want to get that finished. That sounds really interesting. Then I have the new Taylor Jenkins Reid book, uh, Malibu Rising, which sounds like it's about some sort of yuppie family who throw this really anticipated party and it all goes tits up. I've never read um, Taylor Jenkins Reid before. She's kind of, she's been on my radar, but um, I just, I haven't come across any of her books in charity shops. Um, and I just, you know, I haven't been wanting to read her enough to actually go out and purchase one of the books or seek it out in the library. So this came up on NetGalley and I thought, do you know, a lot of people love her. Maybe I will too. I'll give it a shot. And then the last of the four books is Kingdoms by Natasha Pooley. This is set in some sort of alternative history in London where I think France has taken over. It's either the whole of England or just London. Like the speaking of English is outlawed and the guy in the at the centre of the story is trying to unravel the mystery of who he is. I think he's got amnesia and the only clue he has to who he is is a letter that he has on him um, that was written a hundred years ago and he's trying to figure out what all that means. So that's a great mix of books and the only reason I didn't get to them in May is just because I suck at reading. Um, it's not been anything <laughs> personal about any of those books, they just happen to be further down the list that I was incredibly slow in making my way through. So with that in mind, the fact I'm carrying four books forward and that I am struggling to pick up the pace. Um, hopefully that impromptu challenge that I've just set myself will help and I will be able to add more books into June. But I thought June's roughly like four and a half weeks long. So even with what I'm carrying forward, that's already a book a week. So I just decided to add in three books that all come from one kind of project that I've set myself. This started with um, a a trio of prompts from the Around the Year reading challenge, which basically were to read a book. I don't even think it was set in. I think it was just read a book associated with the word past, read one that's associated with the word present and read one um, with future. So I decided to link them in a topic and the topic I have picked is Scottish independence because it's uh, an issue close to my heart. And um, it was a little bit tricky to find books to fill those prompts, but I have managed to do it. I don't know if I would have picked any of them if it hadn't been for this prompt, but that is what learning through books is all about. It's getting out of your comfort zone and um, stretching your knowledge. So for the past, I picked a history book, predictably. Um, this is Chris Banbury's a People's History of Scotland. It's a bit of a chunk. Um, but this is, um, you know, history beyond the monarchy. And I love social history. I couldn't give a flying crap about kings and queens, even Scottish ones. So this one definitely spoke to me, I gather. Um, and I think this might be true for all three of these books, but it does have a bias towards independence, which, spoiler, I'm totally here for. And this looks at those who um, have influenced things on a world level, but also those who influence things, particularly social justice, uh, much closer to home. And I'm really excited to read this. I'm excited to learn more about my country and I am excited to learn both about um, those whose names I already know. I think one that's mentioned on the back, like Ravi Burns is discussed in this. So I'm interested to know a bit more about him beyond what, what we know about Burns Night and things like that. Um, but also I'm really interested in learning about people that I haven't heard of before. Um, so I think this is going to be very interesting, but I'm fairly confident it's not going to be too dry. I've seen some reviews that say it's written um, really well it tells a story so um, i'm hoping it's not going to be too textbooky and then uh, the next book i don't currently have a copy of i've just ordered it today so hopefully um well it's got the whole of june to turn up so hopefully it won't get lost in the mail 
but um, I thought I could get this one out of the library but I've gone through my three library accounts and can't seem to find it so either I was wrong or they've um, got rid of it for some reason but um, my book for the present is Two Closes and a Referendum by Mary McCabe so this is stretching present a little bit because it is focused on the independence referendum in 2014 so it's not current present but the independence discussion still goes on. Indie Ref 2 is still very much anticipated by many people. It's not a topic that's going away. And the referendum in 2014 was really when it came most prominently to the fore. And for those who don't live in Scotland, um, the independence referendum was to ask the Scottish people whether they wanted independence from... Um, it, essentially England, but um, from Britain, um, to become our own independent country. And I think, had um, there not been certain lies told and promises made by the Westminster government that sits in London, I honestly do think that that independence referendum would have resulted in a yes vote for an independent Scotland. But we all know what politics are like, People talk out their arses, so that's where we are. And also why the um, the discussion continues, because following on from that, we of course had Brexit, which Scotland did not vote for. The majority of Scottish people wanted to stay in Europe, but in many things with elections, we our voice is often so small compared to that of the like the English electorate that it's. <laughs> What we want is never, <laughs> never really considered, which is a big argument for independence. Like the fact that we've had, you know, consecutive conservative governments, but Scotland's never voted for a conservative um, majority. There's a lot of issues to unpack and I'm going well off in a tangent here. But this book is set at the time of that referendum and it is about the intersection of the personal and the political. I gather it has quite a vast range of characters because it's looking at people that live in these two closes and they sit on either side of the independence argument. They're from different classes, different backgrounds. Some are from Scotland, some are from different countries, some don't speak English. Um, it's set in Glasgow and it's written by, um, I gather Mary McCabe is a political activist. So to me that sounds really, really interesting. And it's really the only book that I could find that really focused on that issue at that time. So um, that's why I picked that one. And then for my future pick, um, this was the hardest part to fulfill. Um, but I've gone with Richard Drysdale's State of Emergency. I just picked this up from the library, the first library book I have picked up in, that must be over two years. Um, so this is a novel and it's set in the future um, where on the verge of an independence referendum where it looked like um, it was going to be won by Scotland, Westminster cancel the um, vote and declare a state of emergency and put into place direct rule. And it's about how Scotland reacts to that and what Westminster's response is to that reaction. It's a political thriller, so not something that I would usually read. Um, I'm not I'm not hugely optimistic about how much I'm going to enjoy this. And I'm also not sure from which bias this writer is coming at the issue. So That'll be interesting to um, spot as I'm reading. So yeah, not, not hugely optimistic, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So those are my three Scot Scotland books for past, present and future. And then I've got those four that I'm carrying forward from May. I think the way my reading's going, that's giving me more than enough to go on. You never know, maybe I'll surprise myself. Maybe that little challenge I've set myself will set me back on the path of the more voracious reading that I usually enjoy and I can make more of a dent into catching up on those um, 12 in total that I'm behind on. I feel weird ending the video here because it is a lot shorter than um, my usual TBR would be and yeah I think that alone should maybe spur me on to do a bit better with my reading because the less I read the less I have to talk to you guys about. So wish me luck, 
let me know what you will be reading in June. I'm very interested to hear what other people are picking up what's on your TBR or what kind of mood are you in? What do you do when you're kind of in a, I don't even know if I want to call it a reading slump because I still love reading. I, I'm loving my time that I am reading. I'm just not prioritizing it. So what do you do to make reading more of a priority when your pace um, takes a bit of a knock? I would love to know if you've got any tips and tricks. Help me dig myself out of this hole that I'm in. <laughs> that would be really good. And until next time, Bye. So just, I don't, I don't even know what I'm looking for, but yeah. <laughs>